and welcome back footy fans to another episode of donnie's disposal i am your host coach donnie hess here back with the first review vfl vantage of the year you know we got to talk all the state leagues the last of the v of the state leagues will cover for this first month of play is here and joining me as always my faithful co-host the man that knows the vfl and vflw like the back of his hand what is that new mark there just joking that's mr brendan rhodes brendan great to see you sir great to be back with you Donnie, it's been a very interesting start to the season, and uh, yeah, I hope I can remember it all. <laughs> well, the good thing is, is that I've caught you only three or f- three rounds for the men, four rounds for the women have gone, so it's not like the five or six rounds that we did a couple of times last year, so hopefully I agree with you that it should not take as much, so just really quickly, before we dive into each of the rounds, let's go through it. Just your initial thoughts of the starting of both the VFL and VFLW this year. Uh, well, it's certainly looking very even again in the in the VFLW. What, what we've seen differently uh, so far this year is there are a couple of clubs that are giving uh, their AFLW players more of a run earlier in the season and not, not just the not just the um, developing AFLW listed players, we're seeing the the top end ones actually playing, and that and that's why you're seeing uh, some of the huge results that that you might have noticed, uh, mm-hmm. which are which are out of the ordinary in the VFLW, um, like Box Hill Hawks got two games out of Emily Bates, who is a who's a three time All Australian League Best and Fairest winner, Premiership player, four time Best and Fairest, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, She's had 30-odd touches in both games. Uh, Jasmine Fleming played in round one, who's possibly the next big, big thing, and had 39 touches. Uh, we've got the couple of guest teams in, uh, played their first two games over the last couple of weeks with their big AFLW contingent, including some of the some of the best players to play the game running around. So the standard is is certainly up, but it also means that the clubs that don't have that that haven't been picking their AFLW players uh, have copped a couple of hidings that you can't read too much into once the finals come around and those players aren't there. Mm-hmm. But you know we'll cross we'll cross them as we as we get there. Um, in the in the VFL, uh, yeah, very interesting. I, I think it's gone pretty much as I expected so far. I think I I think I predicted that uh, that. Werribee might be better than people think, and they find themselves on top of the ladder after three rounds. Uh, Box Hill's always there and about. They ran into a very powerful Gold Coast team on the weekend in round three, which was their first loss of the season. Uh, we've got William, Williamstown had to fight really hard to beat a couple of teams that I thought uh, might struggle a little bit in Frankston and Coburg. They beat Coburg after the siren in an absolute thriller that I that I was privileged to to actually call, but they find themselves three and zero, and we've got two standalone teams in the top two spots on the ladder after three rounds, which is which is really heartwarming. Um, I wouldn't say there's any major disappointments just yet. There's probably one or two teams that I thought might have had a win on the board by now that don't, and a, and a couple that have maybe an extra win than I thought they would, but um, that's what you want to see. That's what you want to see. You've, if I'm only getting, you know, 60, 60 to 70 percent of the tips right, that means you've got a good competition. And I'd mm-hmm. rather only get 60 to 70 percent than get 95 percent and know what's going to happen every game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100 percent agree. And, and, and when it comes to the VF, when it comes to the VFLW, it's like it, it, I don't mind seeing the the AFLW girls getting a run, even even some of the elite girls, just just to kind of keep eyeballs on it and and i agree with you unfortunately some of the results have been a little more lopsided than i think we're we're used to like i know last year there were so many games that were close so i'm with you on that but it is kind of good to see how good some of these women are like you can tell there are there are levels to this game and some of these girls are are very much on it so so let's go through it we'll we'll go through each of the round like we did last year kind of we'll 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 touch each of the games we'll say the scores and then we'll kind of talk about some of the games that we kind of that we that really like piqued our interest some of the better games of the round so we'll go back to round one 
VFLW, Southern Saints beat the Collingwood Magpies in a thriller by eight, 25-17. Port Melbourne beat Essendon 54-7, a 47-point win for the Burrows there. The Blues knock off the Cats 59-28 by 31. North Melbourne outlast the Duggies 65-43, a 22-point win for the Ruse there. Unfortunately, Darabin's losing streak continues as with Williamstown with a smashing over the Falcons by 76-78-2. And as you said, the Hawks unleashing Emily Bates and Jazz Fleming on the Casey Demons with a 122-14 win over Casey in a 108-point win. I mean, I, I I would say it this. I know I watched the highlights of this game. This game was an absolutely incredible. The eight-point win by the Saints knocking off the Pies and an absolute cracker to start off the VFLW season. Yeah, it certainly was. And, and it's a completely new-look Collingwood team. I'm not sure if we knew just how new it was when we last spoke, but there's only one player in that entire Collingwood squad that was there last year when they made the grand final. So 30, 32 of the 33 players or whoever it was have all moved on to different clubs. So that that's just a crazy turnover of players. So, so you can't look at the Magpies as being, um, as being, you know, last year's grand finalists because it's only the Guernsey that was there. The players mm-hmm. weren't. That that one player missed the grand final through injury uh, in Marnie Jarvis. Um, so it was a solid effort by them. You expected the Saints to win, and they and they duly did win. Uh, and and they look like a, a reasonable team when they come up against other VFLW lineups. The Saints. We'll we'll get to what happened to them. Uh, in round four, and and obviously there's a clear reason why, but but they're they're a good team, they're a contender. Collingwood's basically started from scratch again. Yeah, I mean, it was it was very interesting. I know I know one of last year's one of their better players, Jess Bates, moved back to Glenelg in in South Australia. So it's yes. it's it's kind of again it's kind of a facelift Collingwood team. So uh, but still they they gave the Southern Saints a compet a competitive match, but fantastic we'll move to round two unfortunately not as many crackers in this one but there is the fun result that we'll get to in just a second here but we'll start off as north melbourne beat collingwood 29 to 8 a 21 point win by the ruse there the borough continue the, a, a nice start to the season with a 40 point win over collingwood 61 21 the doggies knock off the D's by 21, 71, 50. And as I said, the cracker as Williamstown and Essendon play to a 35, 35 draw. And the Hawks, as we said, starting off absolutely in fuego with a 98 to two win, a 96 point win for the Hawks and the Southern Saints continue the, the pain for the Darabin Falcons with a 25 point win, 34 to nine. So, I mean, a draw is always exciting may not be for the end of the game when there's this lull of what do we do? Cause there's no song to sing. So your thoughts on this draw between Williamstown and Essendon. It was a wonderful comeback by Williamstown. It, Essendon actually kicked, I think the first four goals of the game and, and led by 20, I think they led by 23 points in the second quarter, just before half time. And then Williamstown gradually pulled their way back and, and got themselves up to level. Essendon are the draw experts. They've had four draws in the past two seasons, would you believe? Um, so they're, they're probably ones that would be looking for extra time or or golden goal shootout or or whatever people want to, to try and get rid of draws. I know there's there's been a groundswell off and on for years about trying to get rid of draws. I love um, the draw, to be honest with a, you. <laughs> it is an, an interesting part of the of the game when you look at it and you think, well, he's two points got away, but it could have been a lot worse. It could have been all four that got away mm-hmm. and, and it can make all the difference. But that, that was the day that to me, I, I think that was more impressive from Williamstown than the, than the big win over Darabin in round one, because Essendon last year's preliminary finalists, uh, premiers in 2022 to chase them, chase them down from four goals behind uh, just showed us that that Williamstown is a very good team, and they and even though they've uh, still only won one game for the year, you have to look at who they've played to to be in that position, and they're they're a serious contender this year, the Seagulls. Mm-hmm, definitely. 
for sure. We move on to round three, and here's where we see the addition of the two New South Wales teams. We'll get to the results here in just a second. As Casey survive a game against North Melbourne, winning by three, 34-31. The Cats knock off the Saints by 18-54-16. Essendon beat the Falcons by 30-40-10. The Hawks beat the Pies 37-3, a 34-point win by the Hawks. The Swans bring down an impressive side with an impressive win over the doggies by 62 84 22 the giants just edge out the carlton blues 43 35 and the borough knock off williamstown 32 9 a 23 point win by the borough continuing their undefeated season their undefeated start to the season i mean i i look at a, a couple of really good games here um uh, let's let's talk. Let's start off with North Melbourne Casey, a three point win by the D's on the road at Arden Street. That's an impressive win there. Massive upset to North Melbourne had won their first two games and won them impressing impressively. Casey had lost their first two games convincingly, and there was nothing to suggest going into this that that Casey would be able to beat North Melbourne. Um, who, as I told you last time, were my premiership favourites to come up from ninth on the ladder. Um, but Casey has never actually lost to North Melbourne. That that takes them to five and zero in their history, and they they managed to they managed to protect it. They led the most of the game. North Melbourne headed them in the last quarter, took the lead, and Casey managed to get it back with uh, with Joanna Lynn kicking a goal with, I think around about thirty seconds to go. Took a mark and kicked a goal with thirty seconds to go to pinch it back for the Demons. So that that was a real character building win that that showed that. Hidden beneath these big margins, we've still got an extremely close competition. And, and it was the same with the Saints and Geelong. The Saints were undefeated and very impressive. Geelong had been thrashed twice, uh, comprehensively beaten by, by five goals and by 15 goals. And for them to, for them to travel to the other side of the city to, uh, uh, to Sandringham and, and beat the Saints and, and overrun the Saints too, they kicked... Mm-hmm. I think five or six goals in the last quarter to come from behind and beat the Southern Saints in that game. That just really showed that you know you can't take anything for granted in this competition. Um, you look at the the other ones to look at there, as as you mentioned, the arrival of the of the two Sydney teams. Um, the Swans played eighteen AFLW listed players in their twenty one against the Bulldogs zero. So, so there's no no surprises about the result there. You you expected Sydney to win. The Bulldogs are a much improved team, as the other results are showing. Uh, but at this stage, you it it's not something that you can read a lot into for the Bulldogs because um, most team most of the five teams. I, I'm really looking forward to a couple of weeks when the undefeated Box Hill Hawks play the Sydney Swans. Um, but at this stage, you would expect the New South Wales teams to start favourite in every game. Uh, they play simply because they're fielding so many quality players. The the Giants beat Carlton by eight points. Carlton actually had a crack at it by fielding their AFLW list. They had 11 AFLW players into the Giants' 12, and that's why it ended up being such a close game. Yeah, I mean, it was it was it was crazy to to see and, and like, but the the thing though is that 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 at least with Sydney, at least with Sydney, I I, I remember watching that game again. I mean, Swans, I mean Swans, Donnie here, I I know people, but I I remember tuning into that game and going seeing Mon Ham, seeing Cynthia Hamilton, seeing so many of the as you said, eighteen of their of their of their twenty one were AFLW. Yeah, so it was like you kind of, it didn't shock me a little bit, which shocked me. The result didn't shock me. It more shocked me than I'm surprised Sydney didn't find a way to get a few more, maybe Sydney comp girls to at least join the VFLW side, just to kind of let the, the, some of the elite talented you women, maybe some time off, maybe some time off, but again, you you never know. Again, coach Gowans, you don't know what he'll do, but again, impressive, impressive win there. So. Yeah, I think in a 10-week AFLW season, they, these girls just want to play more footy. Mm-hmm. As simple as that. Like before the AFLW came around, they were playing in the VFLW or the VWFL, that sort of thing. And they were playing 18 games a year plus finals. Mm-hmm. Now they're only playing 10 plus finals. So 
it, it's a long, long time between August, uh, the start of the season, the end of the season in November and the start of the season in August mm -hmm. for them not to be playing any level of footy at all. So it's no, no surprise that these that these players just want to play footy. Mm -hmm. And and I and I can see this being a precursor to the Swans and the Giants coming into the competition fully next year. Mm -hmm. And then they will play probably under the same format that the other VFLW slash AFLW clubs play, where you'll see um you'll see like like Box Hill have done, they've played They've used 17 AFLW players throughout their first four games, mm -hmm. but up to, I think, 10 or 11 was the most in any one game. They're sort of rotating them through, yep. and, they'll, and they'll play. They'll probably play their five game, five or six games each out of the 14. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so when they're, play, when they're only playing five games, as the Swans and the Giants are, then, the, no, then these no. AFLW players are going to play most of them. Yeah, no, makes sense. Completely makes sense on that one. So we'll jump to, we'll jump to it to round four, the last round that has gone through so far. We start off with a cracking game between the Duggies and the Bombers. It's a two point win by the Doggies, 28 26. The Hawks beat the Seagulls 31 21, a 10 point win for the Hawks. The Collingwood Magpies get a win over their rivals, Carlton, by 17 29 to 12. The KC with another strong performance playing Burrow and beating Port Melbourne 52 at 29 GWS beating the Southern Saints 64 to two Darabin coming super close, but just falling short to Geelong 33, 26 and the Swans with an absolute smackdown at Henson park with an 89 point win, 114 to 25 some cracking games in this round a couple of absolute thrillers in this um hard not to go by this doggies two-point win at Whit noble oh stunning performance by the bulldogs this this is the one that really announced them to us that they're back um they made a grand final in 2019 they've had a real battle since then uh they've, they didn't win a game in 2022 they won three last year improved uh, they've now got two wins and two losses in the first two games. Two and one if you take out the game against Sydney, um, which obviously goes into the into the ladder and percentage purposes and all that sort of thing. But all the all ten of the AFLW aligned clubs will play one game against either the Swans or the Giants, in which they will start underdogs. So. You can take that one with a grain of salt. For for them for them to come back the following week after being beaten like that, they take the, take the experience on board of the level that the AFLW players from the Swans produced against them. Um, we had Laura Gardner, the club best and fairest winner, had 47 disposals. Mon Ham, as you mentioned, had 20 touches and kicked five goals against them. They they what what you'll see is that the VFLW players that are playing against these AFLW players, they now know if we want to play AFLW football, this is the level. This is where we've got to get to. And they learn from that and they come out the next week and play and put in such a wonderful performance to to knock off a powerful club in Essendon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and, and it, it's great to see, and, and 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 it's fantastic again for the competition. Again, it's it's. I agree with you. Is it's a mo it's a potential motivator. So I, I absolutely love it. So yeah. that is it for the VFLW four rounds down. We'll jump back over to the men's side where we will have three rounds to cover. We did have one round off due to the state representative game along with gather round last week. So three rounds to cover here. Let's jump right through it. Unfortunately, round one does not give us too many cracking games. Unfortunately, there's a um, most of them are, are quite lopsided. We do have one under three goals, so we'll, we'll discuss that one. So we'll start off. Collingwood knock off Sandringham by 28, 83, 55. The Seagulls knock off the Dolphins in a in a water in a waterlogged game. Just kidding. 
80 to 59, a 21 point win for the goals there. Richmond beat the Gold Coast Sun 76 53, a 23 point win. The Southport Sharks start off the season with a win over the Borough 97 51. The Lions beat Essendon by 37 99 62. Werribee start strong again this year with a 53 point win over the Cats 103 50. North Melbourne continue the pain for the Northern Bull Ants with an 81-42 win, a 39-point win there. The Swans start strong with a 41-point win, 82-41. The Bulldogs, in an absolute cracking goal fest, beat the Giants 98-81, a 17-point win for the Doggies there. And Box Hill start off strong with a win over the over the Casey Demons by 41-87-46. If I'm honest... Here, Brendan, I mean, really the closest game is almost three goals, and that's Footscray knocking off GWS 98-81. Yeah, there were some really good games, though, despite the despite the score lines being a little bit uh, higher than you'd think. The, the Giants actually led that game by three goals in the third quarter, and the and the Bulldogs managed to run over top of them in the in the last quarter, which was a, a terrific performance uh by them by by Footscray, and it showed the level that they're at, Rory Lobb kicking four goals. These are they they had the AFL stars who really stood up there, as I mentioned, Rory Lobb with four goals. Uh Riley Garcia had 41 disposals and kicked a couple. Um uh, Jack McRae, who I don't think anyone except for uh the Bulldogs themselves know why Jack McRae wasn't in the AFL team, but he had 47 disposals and 26 clearances or something crazy like that. Uh, in the game, and he's been back in the AFL uh, since. So that was a strong performance. The Giants, as I said, were Giants were 23 points up late in the third quarter before being before being run down in that game uh, by the Bulldogs. I saw three of these games. I ca- called three of these games in round one. Um, the Friday night game between Williamstown and Frankston that was an absolute cracker. It ended up being 21 points, but Williamstown went in clear favourites, expecting to win very comfortably. And I think it was the 26-minute mark of the last quarter. They only led by nine. And and it was anybody's game. Frankston just needed a little bit of luck uh, and they might have got over the line. But the luck went the other way. There was a there was a freak goal from the boundary line, a, a, a clearance, like a, like a centering kick soccer style from the boundary line that, that was side footed in uh, right on the line to seal, to, to get some leeway. And then they kicked another one late. So, so Williamstown's 21 point win probably flattered them a little bit. Uh, I saw, I saw Werribee against Geelong. That was about four goals. The difference at three quarter time, Werribee kicked seven in the last quarter and blew it away to win by, to win by that 53 point margin. Uh, I saw the box Hill game against the Casey demons, uh, the demons are extremely disappointing that day. There's no other way to put it. They, they at home, like I had Box Hill finishing a lot higher than Casey on the ladder, but I expected a much stronger performance from the demons that day, and uh, and they were quite disappointing. As good as Box Hill was uh, in that one, we uh, we also saw uh, the Gold Coast Suns who lost two games last year. Uh, they they dropped one by one point, one by two points. They've lost at home by 23 points to Richmond. That was a real turn up and uh, and showed that maybe maybe they just they don't quite have the depth. We know they don't have the the depth outside their AFL team, outside their AFL list. They've got a longer AFL list and they top it up with academy kids. Mm-hmm. So when the AFL guys aren't there, like they were all last year, they can be very vulnerable. And that that's what we saw there. And when they are available. We saw what you'll what we'll talk about when we get to round three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just, it just it just shows you that the, their depth was one of the reasons why they were so strong last year. So we'll have to see. We we'll jumped around yeah, two. No and, and and the crazy part about it is from last week with all of those games that I mean over three goals. This week had several absolute belters. As we start off, I mean, hey, let's start off the round with an absolutely insane one in a goal fest as the Lions. Just edge out the pies by two at Brighton Homes Arena, 105-103. 
North knock off the Blues by 16, 90 to 74. Williamstown edge over the Lions by 6, 83 77. Frankston knock off the Bur knock off Port Melbourne, 96 71, a 25 point win for the Dolphins. Box Hill with another strong performance, a 30 point win, 34 point win over the Cats, 111 77. Werribee go up to Southport and knock off the Sharks in a thriller by 3, 62 59. The doggies smash the doggies with a 14 point win over the demons, 99 85. The Tigers at home knock off the Swans, 84 72, a 12 point win there. And Sandringham ends the round with an impressive win over the Bombers by 38 115 77. I mean, a couple of goal games and some goal and some games decided by less than a goal, an incredible round two. I mean, which would you rather prefer? Do we want to talk of Brisbane Collingwood, which is an absolute cracker or this absolutely magnificent one up in Southport with a three point win by the Tigers? So, so much we could talk about so many storylines out of this one. The Lions had that Collingwood game under complete control for, for basically the entire game and the, and Early in the last quarter, they actually led by 32 points, and it looked like being being just one way traffic at home, and and they and they were going to cruise. But then then Collingwood came to life, and an untried AFL uh, wing half forward by the name of Joe Richards, um, he decided to uh, have a breakout game at VFL level, and this is a guy who who never showed any interest in coming down to play AFL or anything. He, he was a, a 22-year-old school teacher in, in 2022 up in Wangaratta. Um, a, a, as a kid, kicked 11 goals on debut in, in country footy in the Ovens and Murray League. Um, but would never wanted to go down. They, Collingwood finally talked him into going down there. They, he had a brilliant year in the Ovens and Murray League. They picked him up. He had a hamstring injury that cost him a little bit of footy last year and, and stopped him from getting a senior game. But in this game, he kicked four goals in the last 20 minutes to give himself six for the game and and went within a whisker of, of picking up an unlikely win for the Magpies. So so certainly they might have found another one, Collingwood, and, and yeah, certain, a player to keep an eye on over the next few weeks. Uh, yeah. I, I did the I did the Coburg-Williamstown game on Good Friday. Again, as I said, with Williamstown and Frankston, one that you expected Williamstown to win easily. Uh, Coburg sitting on, I think, going into this game, they were sitting on a 22-match losing streak. And they they looked, they looked they were plucky. They, they stuck with Williamstown for most of the day, but they were 20 points down at the 20-minute mark or 23-minute mark of the last quarter. And then they then they went bang, and they actually levelled the scores with about 35 seconds to go, and it looked like they were going to at least pinch a draw. A scrambling kick out of the middle, a ball up, a scrambling kick out of the ball out of that ball up, and remember Gary Rowan's mark against Essendon a few years ago? Mm -hmm. Identical, identical. Oh, Jack man. Toner for Williamstown playing in front, took the mark at the top of the goal square. Siren sounded as he was going in to take his kick. And Williamstown <laughs> got away with a six-point victory uh, in in uh, an absolute classic game of footy. Break, break Coburg hearts. You feel so sorry for them. But if they keep playing like that, then the drought won't last too much longer. Uh, great win for Frankston over Port Melbourne. Box Hill was actually... I think 25 points down on Geelong midway through the third quarter and then kicked, I think it was 10 or 11 goals to one after that. They kicked six goals in the last 15 minutes to turn that into a one-sided game. And yeah, that, so they, they were the main ones and a, a very courageous victory by Richmond over Sydney just as the injuries started to bite them there as well. Yeah, and for unfortunately, so uh, so it, it's it, it, I love seeing those games. So there's it, it's it's absolutely heartbreaking for for Coburg because you, there's there's part of you like you want them to get that win to end the streak and everything like that, but 
Sometimes you just, you gotta, sometimes as a Williamstown team, sometimes you gotta win ugly. It's an ugly win. It's one of those that I, yeah. there's probably more learnings out of that than they probably would like for a win, but it's, it's one of those, it, it, it makes for, it makes for some fantastic footy again. Like I said, my heart breaks for Coburg. I hope that they end the streak very, very soon. We'll jump to it. The round just passed by. We're like less than 24 hours after all of these games are over. So we're just still fresh in our minds. They starting off as the Footscray Bulldog knockoff Essendon 114 80 a 34 point win there the Giants with a 46 point win over the Zebras 125 79 Seagulls back up that closer performance with an impressive 46 point win over the South Park Sharks 112 66 Werribee capitalizing on a Richmond team that's still fighting injuries galore and unfortunately gained another one in this particular game with a 21-point win, 73-52. Casey knock off Port Melbourne by 15, 90-75. Gold Coast Suns get their win, kind of backing up a little bit with, an, with a 43-point win, 88-45. The Ruse and the Lions play to a one-point game as the Ruse edge out the Lions at Arden Street. And then in a hold my beer moment, Collingwood and Carlton go, we can do the same thing as the pies knock off the blues by one 83, 82 kind of an anticlimactic ending to the round as Geelong smashed the press, smashed Northern bull ants by 53, 89, 36. I mean, hold my beer moments two one point games back to back. How good is this? Oh, Sensational stuff, and I, I didn't see either of them because I was actually commentating the Northern Bull Ange Geelong game, uh, which 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 <laughs> was on at exactly the same time, uh, and and that was a much better game than the we'll get we'll get to the one pointers, but the Bull Ants and Geelong was a much better game than that score indicates. Um, the Cats, I think, won each of the first three quarters by a goal, two goals, something like that. They were they were four goals up, I think it was, at three-quarter time and then uh, ran away in the last quarter. The Ants failed to score in the final quarter. Geelong added added three goals, six, to to put them away in the end. But there was some amazing football played in this game. Um, check out the check out the VFL page. I, I've actually shared one on my on my page on X that I that I was lucky enough to call a mark taken by James Willis. Uh, in this game, and yeah, yeah, let's just say he was that high. He was able to uh, he was able to give a high five and have a beer with God before he took the mark and came down. <laughs> uh, am I allowed to say that? You're <laughs> Too gonna bad I me. just did. <laughs> yeah, so, it it was a stunning mark, and and it followed up uh, with some amazing football as well. Uh, look for a highlight of Patrick Fairley kicking an amazing goal out of the pack for Northern Bull Ants earlier on in that game as well. So, so some terrific footy played there. The, the two one point games we can look at there. Um, Brisbane Lions will be wondering what happened. They'll be wondering what happened there. They had, I think 50 or 60 more disposals. They had 30 odd more marks. They had 30 odd more inside fifties. And the score, you said 76 to 75. Break it down. 12 goals for 76 North Melbourne. Brisbane Lions, 9 21 75. So 30 scores to 16 in favour of the Lions, and they found a way to lose that game. Uh, they actually hit the lead with about a minute and a half to go, a snap from Brandon Ryan, but mm -hmm. North was able to to go forward and Sam Lawson who kicked four straight there's the difference in the game right there calmly kicked a set shot to to steal it back for the ruse uh, the Carlton Collingwood game see I was following the scores in this one seesawing all day Carlton up by a couple of goals Collingwood up by a couple of goals it just kept swinging it swinging around Collingwood looked like they were home they were 11 points up I think about the 22 minute mark of the last quarter Carlton goes bang, bang, hits the lead by a point and Collingwood managed to kick two behinds themselves to turn that one-point deficit into a one-point win in an absolute cracking game of football. Um, we'll quickly touch on a couple of the others. The Gold Coast Suns, as I said, they were able to pick a much stronger team in this game and Box Hill went up to Queensland undefeated on top of the ladder with a percentage of about 170. And they kicked their first goal of the game. The Hawks kicked their first goal of the game 
at, I can tell you exactly when they did, they kicked their first goal of the game at the nine-minute mark of the third quarter, by, by which time the Suns were in front by 57 points. So it ended up being a 43-point a margin. The Hawks fought the game out well, but, but that was an ominous display from the Suns that shows that when they do have their best team on the park, they're going to take a lot of beating. Uh, the other game I, I got to commentate was the Port Melbourne Casey game. Port Melbourne led that one all the way. It was close all the way, but Port Melbourne was a couple of goals in front all day. Looked like they were get, going to get the job done, but uh, but Casey was just a little bit too composed, a little bit too professional. They kicked six goals to one in the last quarter and and turned a 14-point deficit into a 15-point win and yeah, got themselves their first victory of the year and and left Port Melbourne at zero and three. Absolutely insane. Like I'm looking at the score. I'm looking at the scoreline, and I, I, was, I was like sitting here going, "It's like he's right." Like nine ten mark, the nine ten mark of the third quarter. That's insane to hold a team with no goals, three points altogether in the first half by the Hawks in that game. So, wow, yeah, and, and, oh, that, wow. and that's not a struggling team. That's not a struggling team. They did that too. That was the team that was on top of the ladder. Mm-hmm. And I, and I'm actually seeing that I'm, I'm seeing this James Willis, Mark, you are not kidding. I mean, he's going to need an ox. He's going to need, as you kind of stated in your tweet, he's going to need an oxygen mask. That's how high he got up there. I mean, anything up any higher should need, should need a movie and a stewardess. Wow. Yeah, that definitely. is, that at, is at go, go and have, go and have a look at that. And uh, yeah, give, give, give us a follow and have a look at that at, at, at B roads VFL. And uh, yeah, anyone across them, America, you'll be you'll be wondering the athleticism and how how someone can actually jump that high. That is absolute. That is absolutely insane. I will def. I will definitely retweet that out. I will definitely retweet that out for sure. So that'll do it. That is all three rounds of the men's that have played so far. So we've done it. We've we've covered four rounds in the in the women's, three rounds in the men's. So many games of footy. That's fantastic. We've got some burning questions. We'll try to go through this quickly because I know it is getting late for you over there in Melbourne. So let's jump to the women's part. After four rounds of footy, Box Hill, as we kind of said, starting very strong. The only undefeated team still left in the competition so far. I mean, with Port Melbourne nipping at their heels, only one game back with one loss. Right now, so far, are these your top two sides right now, or is it still a little early to say, considering we do have Sydney and GWS kind of throwing a little bit of a spanner in the works? I think it's definitely too early to say, mainly because the Hawks have been playing that AFLW strength. And highly likely, and this is the way they do operate and have operated in the past, it's almost certain that these players will not be there come the end of the season, come the finals. Mm-hmm. So so you'll see that while they're playing, they're going to win a lot of games of football and they're going to win them well. And they were fiercely challenged by Williamstown. I, I commentated that game uh, on the weekend and they, and they were pushed all the way uh, with eight AFLW players. So as that number drops, they're going to potentially open you know, be opened up to being to being caught there. They actually went, would you believe, 237 minutes without conceding a goal. From the 15-minute mark of the second quarter in round one to the 12-minute mark of the second quarter in round four, they didn't concede a single goal. Mm-hmm. So so they are, they are powerful, but their powerful players are mostly not going to be around when the whips are cracking. Uh, so, so that's why Port Melbourne, for me, is the... Is, Clearly the most impressive team at the moment. Uh, North Melbourne, a shock loss to the Casey Demons. They're sitting, they're sitting fifth at the moment. That ladder that you're looking at doesn't show the Swans and the Giants who are sitting third and fourth, uh, but obviously won't be making the finals because even if they do go five and zero, that won't be enough wins to qualify. So, mm-hmm. so North Melbourne definitely. Western Bulldogs are. are I, I want to. I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing, but I want to see it for a bit longer. The team that's that's sitting down there in uh, in tenth spot on the ladder or eighth on what on the ladder that you're looking at, Williamstown, mm-hmm. one win, two losses, and a draw. The two losses have been to Box Hill and Port Melbourne, who were the two undefeated teams heading into round four. 
mm-hmm. and the draw was to Essendon, who uh, made the preliminary final last year. So, and they had a and they had a massive win over Darabin, which sees their percentage as the third highest in the league, even though they're that far that far down the ladder. So they they're certainly the the standouts for me. Uh, I think Port Melbourne, Port Melbourne, North Melbourne, and potentially Williamstown. That's not saying Box Hill can't do it without their AFLW players, but I want to see how they go without their AFLW players. Yeah, I'm looking at the ladder right now. I mean, I mean, just I mean, this is how ridiculous their their percentage is 720 right now. They've scored 288 yeah, points. They've about- only given up 40, and they've played. So they're giving up an average of 10 points a game. I mean, that's. Very impressive, as you said. It's it's a little twenty one of those points was live, was this weekend. Exactly, it's a little bit skewed. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm looking at the ladder. The ladder that I have currently has Sydney and GWS in it. Sydney right now is is third, and they have a percentage of four hundred and twenty one point three. They've scored one hundred and ninety eight points and only given up forty seven. Again, they've only played two games, but I mean, it's I I agree with you. The ladder is a little bit skewed because you're going to have, like I said, GWS and Sydney are are going to be in the ladder but they really aren't going to be contending for finals unless we have utter chaos, which, which, which would be interesting. I, yeah, I highly doubt. They're probably going to finish around about ninth or 10th. Yep. I yep. would they'll, say with five, with, if, even if they get their five wins. Yeah. Even if they go five and oh, I think, I think they'll just fall short, but I mean, it's been impressive. So, and we'll kind of, we'll kind of piggyback on that is, as we said last week, we saw the introduction of the new South Wales teams. And again, just, just being honest as somebody that keeps track of this competition as you kind of st- as you kind of caveated all of the non affiliated sides do not play sydney and gws so the five the 10 games altogether the gws and sydney will play will basically be one game apiece for all of the attached sides in the vflw yeah, so it's, is it's williamstown and darabin are the two that miss that don't have to play gws or sydney so that that's a bonus for williamstown who i think are a contender yeah. So, so I look at it and I, and I ask this, is this good for the competition to see the new South Wales teams to be able to kind of see how it goes to potentially, as you said, maybe eventually next year, have these two teams become full members of the VFL? Are you kind of indifferent because the five games is just, it's, it's a little teaser test and it may skew the results for the next five weeks while that, while they are playing in the competition. That's the thing, yes. It it does skew the results, and it's going to affect the percentages clearly. As I said, if you if you look at that ladder, um, North Melbourne and the Western Bulldogs are the next two teams on the ladder. Um, they're the ones that have lost to Sydney convincingly. They're they're two and one outside the the Swans games, and they've got percentages in the seventies. So so that that's certainly going to affect them. Uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see. Port Melbourne is loosely aligned to to Richmond, which is why. So in in the women's, they're they're aligned to Richmond, which is why they uh, I believe have a game. I think against the Giants, um, they're not a standalone club in women's footy that they are in men. Um, so, so yeah, it, it is quite skew. If it's going to be very hard to get a read on on the competition and who the real contenders are until until after those teams are gone and, and really right down to the end, right down to around 12, 13, 14, you're not going to really know how how it's going to unfold and how these games are going to affect the final ladder. You look at it, you can look at it Box Hill the same way. They've, they've played 10, 11, 12 AFLW players in their early games and, and they've blown teams away. Mm-hmm. So every club... Every club has the ability to do that. The clubs that have that are playing against the Swans and the Giants, they have the ability to play their AFLW players. Mm-hmm. Southern Saints chose not to against GWS on the weekend. They rested four of their AFLW girls from that trip to Sydney and Julie got beaten 64 to 2 with a with a much weaker team. They would have obviously gone much better if they'd taken a stronger team to Sydney, which which is on them. Mm-hmm. So it's as simple as that. Uh, I, I would expect Box Hill will probably have a fair crack at Sydney and play a strong team that day. So that 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 that's where it's at. The, these teams could play their strong sides. They're opting not to, and as a result, their percentages are going to cop a hit. 
Yeah, I just I pulled it up because I wanted to be sure you are right. It is Port Melbourne play GWS. And what I find fascinating about it is in that same round, Sydney play Box Hill. So that, that's, I, I think that's two, I, two, two, two weeks away. Yeah, it, it will. It will be very it will be very, very interesting. Yep. Round six, round six, April uh, uh, on that weekend, Port, Port Melbourne host GWS and ETU Stadium in Melbourne and Box Hill will host Sydney at F-E-N-J-I-U Stadium. Fenju Stadium. Man. Fenju Stadium. New, no, I didn't want to butcher it. I did not want to yeah. butcher it. <laughs> yeah. that's, Box, that's the old Box Hill City Oval. They, they signed a new sponsorship agreement in the week before round one for three years, which is, which is fantastic for them, a good good cash injection. So yeah. uh, that'll certainly help them out. But th- those two games in two weeks will clearly be the biggest tests mm-hmm. for the Swans and the Giants in their in their bids to be five and zero and, and if box hill and port melbourne stand up to those games well obviously that that then tells you that they're the they're the major players for the vflw premiership yeah it'll definitely, it'll definitely be interesting but in, in some situations you almost look at it and you go if you you almost want to have gws instead of sydney because as of, as of far as sydney has been much more lethal points wise so it'll be it'll be fascinating to see on that one so again well, we're, we're, we're well, still ones have played yeah, sorry. The Swans have played their seventeen and eighteen. The Giants have been playing about twelve yeah, AFLW so. listed players. Yeah. So, so hence why their scores are a little bit lower. Yeah. So, which I mean, it'd be interesting to see how does how does how does Sydney go over the next couple of rounds? Will they stay with those super strong sides with high numbers or not? So, we'll jump over to the men's now. So we're three rounds. We're three rounds in. I had to adjust this a little bit because we had to change it. So we were originally we're only going to cover round two, but due to some scheduling situations, we will cover round three. And after three rounds, there are four unbeaten teams still left in the VFLW. Are there any surprises at the top of the ladder here in the VFL, or are these kind of who you expected to be at the top of at the top of the ladder? I certainly expected these teams to be up there, definitely. Um, I think, if I remember rightly, I had all four of those teams finishing in the top six. Um, where be where be getting that win over Southport at Southport was a big result. Uh, that that's that's really set them up to to uh, really build into this season as the as they try to go one better from last year. Williamstown, I expected them to be to be three and zero. They they've beaten Southport easily, but that was down here that was down here in Melbourne. So so I had them I had them as favourites, not not as easily as that. But Southport did have a lot of injuries last year, and they've got quite a few again right now. So they they lost four or five players from from the team before the bye that came down here. It's not taking anything away from Williamstown, who were magnificent in an eight-goal win against a, against a team that I feel will be right at the pointy end. Uh, North Melbourne, I considered them to be... Actually, I might not have had them in the top six, but I considered them to be actually a, a chance, and it doesn't surprise me to see them where they are. And, and Footscray, I certainly did have in the... Uh, in the, I think our last podcast, I had them in the grand final, which I changed before the season started. I still had them in the top four. So um, Brisbane Lions and Box Hill, the next two teams have had that had the one loss each. The Lions, I, the Lions, I've got as my premiership favourite. I didn't pick them to win it, but I picked them to win the minor premiership. So that, so there's, yeah, there's no surprise to see those teams up near the top uh, at all. I. If you look down uh, down towards the bottom of the ladder, I thought Port Melbourne would have at least a win on the board by now, uh, sitting in, in 19th spot. Uh, Casey got that first win uh, on the weekend, which sort of gets them going. I expect them to finish higher than they are, and I expect Southport to finish higher than they are. Having having lost that home game again, that, that, that really hurts them, but... That'll, that'll take shape over the over the next couple of weeks, but certainly the teams at the top of the ladder uh, have every right to be there, and they're going to take a fair bit of dislodging. Yeah, it'll definitely be interesting. And then, unfortunately, we'll go from the good part of the ladder to the bad part of the ladder as we see five teams with no wins. Now, again, caveat a little bit. Not everybody's played the same amount. Three of those bottom five teams have only played two games compared to two of them playing three are there any surprises at the bottom of the ladder? Are there any teams with no wins in the in the win column that are kind of surprising to you? 
well, it, probably only Port Melbourne that I just that I just touched on there. They they lost a home game on Good Friday against Frankston that they that they would have started strong favourites in. Um, the coaching staff wielded the axe after that one. They made seven changes before the game against Casey, and they they got the response that they wanted. They just didn't quite have the the experience or the poise to, to get them or the fitness to get themselves over the line uh, in the long run. So I thought they might have had a win a win by now. Uh, Coburg was so so close as we mentioned earlier. Uh, Carlton's lost lost their two games, but uh, they lost by 16 points and by one point, so they're not far off the mark. Um, Essendon have Essendon have struggled. But I, I had them down near the bottom of the ladder. And, and the Bull Ants, in their two games, they've been competitive for long stretches, but with a completely new-look team, um, it's going to take time for them to gel together. They had 15 players in the team against Geelong on, on Sunday that, uh, uh, that weren't at the club last year. So, so it's going to take time. At the moment, they don't quite have the, the experience or the, or the training to be able to play it for four full quarters and that's why they're they're falling away and being beaten but um i re- i reckon they're on the right track and they could they could pinch a win or two later on in the year yeah it'll definitely be interesting and then and then we'll kind of go to this I, i'm i'm not sure how much you want to talk about it unfortunately and we did have a state representative game for the first time in a long time with with the big v coming out as victoria played south australia Unfortunately, the big V fell a little bit short to the South Australians. And as we were discussing off mic, there, there is a little bit of a caveat to that game. But your thoughts on this, is this something that you would like to see continued on? Because it's great to see the big V come out and to see that rivalry between South Australia and Victoria reignited after so many years kind of dormant. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. And I'm and I am a proud and passionate New South Welshman, so so I'm not I'm not someone that grew up uh, I suppose bleeding for the big V, but here but here we are here we are now and and it's it's such an iconic jumper that one the the South Australian crow eaters Guernsey the the black swans of WA the uh, the Apple Isle of Tasmania the I, I love I love representative football at any level always have always will. And it's been a massive chasm that it's not there. That you know, I'd love to see State of Origin come back at AFL level. Um, I don't think it's going to happen because the fixture is that that condensed, that jammed in now that they that they just can't do it, and the and the clubs don't want to release their players to play in it. So, mm-hmm. so this is probably the best level we can get at. And and Victor- and Victoria named a very very strong team. Pro- probably not quite as strong as as they could have. There was. Oh, maybe I think they lost about half a dozen players to injury the week before, which was which was a real pain. But there's but there's no excuses there because I think there was maybe 15 uh, players who had previously been on an AFL list in that in that team that that went over to Adelaide during gather round to take on South Australia and and they had their chances. They definitely had their chances. They led. Uh, they led early. I think they were still a point up at half time. They fell 17 points down uh, at three quarter time. They had they had two or three shots early in the last quarter that would have got them right back into the game, but they missed those. And South Australia held on, and and and, and good on them. They they haven't lost to Victoria now since 2002. There was no there has there's been no game of course for five five or six of those years, but. It's, I think, now seven wins out of the last eight games for South Australia. So they quite rightly can can lay claim to be the strongest state league in the country. Obviously, there's a lot more AFL-listed players in the VFL because there's a lot more AFL teams aligned to it. But at the standalone level, at the non-listed player level, uh, the South Australia... Uh, Oh, and I think we they just... can train together more in the same state. They play as no doubt uh, the mm-hmm. VFL do too. But um, but yeah, the South Australia thoroughly deserved that win. I'm not taking anything away from them at all. And and uh, yeah, we look forward to hopefully having another crack at it next year. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, 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 I'm one of those. I agree with what so many people have said that I think that this has to continue. I think it's fantastic for footy. It's a great way to potentially even see those up and coming players that potentially could see their AFL or see AFL time in the future. Definitely cannot wait right. for that. Let's get, let's get to it. We'll, we'll get, get to the, the waffle involved as well. Get the waffle I agree. back. Get Victoria playing the waffle again as well at some stage for sure. And would even lo- I would even love I I know it would kind of throw off the VFL sandful waffle, but I mean if you could even find a way to let the Queensland and the New South Wales teams play as allies, and maybe even if, if, when you get the Tasmanian teams, potentially that way you have a four teams you could play a rotating schedule. Waffle play Victoria, Sandful play the Allies, and then the next year it's Allies play Waffle, and then Victoria plays. So then it's always rotating. You get a couple of games. I think it would be fantastic yeah. for. Well, that- the comp, but we'll have to see. Yeah, the last three or four years of of proper AFL state of origin in the early nineties before it fell away. That's exactly what they did. Um, the the two winners played off the following year. The two losers played off the following year, and then it and then it rotated around. So Victoria say beat South Australia, and West Australia beat the Allies. Then Vic would play WASA would play the Allies, and then and that's that's how they that's how they worked it out. Um, Again, as a New South Welshman, I'm not a. I'd, I'd rather see the uh, the sky blue of New South Wales playing. I know it's not quite as strong, but at the at the under eighteen championships level, they actually play rep games beforehand. So New South Wales, Queensland, Tasmania, Northern Territory, uh, they all play games against each other in Division Two of the championships. And then they come together. They pick an allies squad out of that that then comes together and plays in Division One. Uh, and it was the allies who won it, won the tournament in 2023 for the first time ever. So we've so we've already seen some absolute stars emerge from that team. The uh, uh, the Tasmanian boys, McKercher, uh, Colby McKercher, Riley Sanders, um, the four boys that were picked up by by Gold Coast, Jed Walter, Ethan Reed, these guys all playing AFL football already. They were all in that Allies team. So there's, um, it was just a golden year for those other states, and they and they beat everybody. But yeah, so that that, that that's what I would like to see. If, if you're going to have an Allies team involved, I still want to see this, those other four states plus in Northern Territory being a territory, but I'll call it states for this this discussion. I want to see them playing their rep footy as well. And and Northern Territory played against the Essendon VFL team in January and beat them soundly. So there's plenty of talent up there as well. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Let's get to it. We always end the episode with some tipping. I will hop on just, just for fun here on this. So we'll start off. We will begin, we are gentlemen, we will begin with the ladies going into round five. Some interesting matchups here. I'm interested to see how it goes. I'll start off at DSV Stadium in Victoria as the Seagulls of Williamstown host the Western Bulldogs. Who do you like in this one? What a cracker. What a cracker. Uh, that That's a genuine flip of the coin game. And there's a couple of flip of the coin games here. Um I'm going to take Williamstown at home. I thought they were they were very very impressive in that game against Box Hill that I saw on the weekend. The Bulldogs are obviously playing really good footy at the moment, but I, I think I think at home Williamstown might just be able to get over the line, but there'll be nothing in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm going to go with you. I think the hometown of the Williamstown, but I think this should be an absolute cracker. Cannot wait for it. We jump over to Gina Steele Oval in Preston as Darabin host Collingwood. Can the Falks end the losing streak? Unfortunately, I think the Pies win this one, but I think the Falks, the Falcons, give this one a mighty crack. This is going to be a fantastic game. Who do you like in this one? Yeah, well, you can't, you cannot really, as much as you'd like to, you can't really pick a team that's lost twenty five games in a row, can you? Mm-hmm. Um, you you would you would love to, and I think they are a they are a live chance in this one. Collingwood obviously played uh, an amazing game against Carlton on Saturday to to get their first win of the season, which which shows that they're that they're starting to come together, the new squad, and develop well. Darabin very good against Geelong on a long drive down to Colac, which is about two hours from Melbourne. 
so they, they've done very, very well. And I'll get a lot of confidence out of that. So we'll see how it goes. You've got to pick Collingwood, but uh, yeah, I'm sure that the Falcons will be eyeing that one as an opportunity. An absolute cracker at Fenji at Fenji Stadium in Box Hill as the Hawks top of the table host North Melbourne, as you kind of said, probably the de facto third place team in the ladder right now. If you take Sydney and GWS out of there, cracking one Box Hill, North Melbourne. Who do you like in this one? Selection plays a big role, doesn't it? Uh, if Box Hill if Box Hill brings all their AFLW players and North Melbourne doesn't, then obviously Box Hill win the game. Uh, and that, that puts a lot of pressure on North Melbourne then as they fall to two and three uh, to try and stay in touch. But maybe maybe North Melbourne might say, hey, this is the game where we where we roll out some of our stars and and have a, and have a full crack at it. So... Well, I, I'm actually lucky enough to be to be calling this one on Saturday, so so I can't can't wait for that. And the Box Hill favourites because of the way they've selected their teams so far, but North Melbourne um, certainly looming large. Yeah, I, I'm gonna go with you on this one too. I think Box Hill, but I think North do do they do they get the temptation to try to chuck a few of their AFLWs AFLW players in there just to see how it goes? Be interesting. All right, we get to it. The new, the two new South, the new they South do. Wales teams do. play back to back. Is first we see a Thomas Willis Oval Stadium in Sydney as GWS host the Cats. I'm going to tip the Giants in this one. I, I just think there's going to be a little too much AFLW talent. The Cats will give them a run, but I think the Giants just a little bit too good. Yeah, yeah. No, I thought I think the Giants win that one uh, pretty pretty comfortably. Uh, the cats will will uh, will push hard, but they won't have the class to go with GWS if they if they select the team that they've selected the first two weeks. Yep, and then kind of the same, and then kind of the same thing with the Sydney Swans and Blacktown up in, up in Sydney as the Swans host the Casey Demons. Like I said, if 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 selection stays about the way it is, I think the Swans just too good for the Demons in this one. Yeah, no question. Well, you you look at the last two weeks there. The Swans beat North Melbourne by by uh, eighty nine points. Casey beat North Melbourne by three. Um, with very that, and that's the difference in the quality that uh, that the Swans will be able to put out compared to Casey. I think it'll be closer than that because Casey did put out four extra AFLW players in that game against Port Melbourne on the weekend. So they might be planning to have a full crack at this one, which will which will help them go better. But Swans should win. All right, we jump to back down to Icon St- Icon Park down in Melbourne as Carlton host Port Melbourne. Who do you like in this one? Port Melbourne on the rebound. Um, Car- Carlton is better than a one-three team. That that loss to Collingwood is extremely disappointing, and they'll they'll be wanting to hit back hard. But I think I think Port Melbourne will be well and truly chastened by that performance against the Casey Demons, and they'll get the job done. All righty. I'm with you on that one. I think Port Melbourne win this one, even on the road. And last but not least, at the Hangar for the Southerns, as the Southerns, which is interesting, uh, at the Hangar as Essendon hosts the Southern Saints in this one. I'm going to tip the Saints on this one, but this is one of those, I, I think this is a coin flip game again, too. I think it really all depends on how the game kind of goes. I'll tip Southern, tip the Southern Saints in this one. Their, their form's just been a little bit better, but again, I will not, not, out not, not think that Essendon is not an absolute crack in this game. Word for word, what you just said. Word for word, what you just said. So Saints to win for me, but um, yeah, any anybody's game, they're they're very very evenly matched these two teams, and and uh, yeah, it certainly wouldn't surprise me to see Essendon fire up, especially after losing a game that they probably wouldn't have thought they should have lost against the Dogs. All righty, and that is all of the women's games. We will jump over to the men's competition with some absolute crackers here. Said if I could get my computer to work, absolutely. There we go. Starting off, and the Friday night footy game sees Frankston at Kinetic Stadium hosting the Northern Balance. I'll take the Dolphins in this one. I think the Balance will will make it a competitive game, but I think the Dolphins just a little bit too good. Interesting the way the fixtures fallen on this, and the ball ants uh, would probably be a little bit frustrated. Frankston's just had two weeks off with this state game and then the bye on the weekend. 
whereas the Bullants played on Sunday. So this is Frankston playing off a 21-day break, Bullants playing off five. So you would expect that the fresher legs should make a difference towards the end of the game and, and Frankston should win. Yeah. All righty. We'll move to it. Also at the hangar next up as Essendon hosts the Southport Sharks in this one. Be interesting. The Queensland side coming down. Who do you like in this one? You would hope the Sharks get a couple of players back from their injuries, but regardless, they should still have too much class for Essendon. Put up a good fight against Footscray, the Bombers. They led at half time, so so they're not they're not going to be a pushover if Southport can't can't bring their A game. But I think if Southport are going to be a a fair dinkum contender this year, then they win this. Yeah, I'm with you on this one. I think the I think the Sharks in this one, but yeah, I think it'll I think it'll be a cracking game. Cannot wait for it. Jump out to Avalon Airport's uh, Oval in Avalon is where the Tigers host the Geelong uh, host the GWS Giants. I got the Tigers in this one. The Tigers just too good. Um, okay. I just love watching this Werribee Tigers team play. So they're brilliant. They are, they are absolutely outstanding. They haven't, they've lost, they lost, uh, I think over 500 games worth of experience from their grand final team and they haven't missed a beat mm-hmm. and, and they'll be and as good as the giants were in their big win over Sandringham at the weekend, Werribee should be far too good for them at the, at Avalon airport oval. Definitely, for sure. We jump up from Avalon up to Queensland, up to Ipswich and Brighton Homes Arena as the Brisbane Lions host the Geelong Cats in this one. Who do you like in this one? Uh, Lions. Lions. Lions will bounce back. The, the, cat, the Cats put up a... They'll, they'll, they'll put up a bit of a fight as, the, as they did today, but against the quality teams, they, um, they've found themselves wanting in the fourth quarter of games. There was a, there was a corner turn today. They had a good last quarter after being blown away by Werribee and Box Hill, but I think the Lions uh, could do the same thing to them and win pretty comfortably. No, I'm, I'm with you on this one. I like to I like Brisbane in this one at home. A fun, a fun one at Fenji Stadium in Box Hill as the Hawks host the North Melbourne Roos. I'm going to tip the Roos in this one. Road team, sometimes it'd be interesting. It'll be fun one on this one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tip the Roos on this one. Usually I tip the home team, but we'll go with North Melbourne in this one. Who do you like in this one? Yeah, I'm, I'm tipping the Hawks, but uh, but I'm certainly not blaming you for taking your suggest, uh, but for taking North Melbourne. I think this is a this is quite a closely matched game. Um uh, and and uh, the first real test, I think, uh, for North Melbourne. Well, that that's that's a silly thing to say because they've just beaten the Brisbane Lions, who are the premiership favourites. Um, <laughs> but travelling away against a, against a contender who will be on the rebound after copping a flogging up in Queensland last week, the Hawks will be coming out breathing fire in this one. And uh, so, if North can knock them off, that will be a real statement. Um, I think I think the Hawks to win, uh, but yeah, a, a, ni- a nice little tester for North Melbourne. Yeah, it'll be it'll be a fun one. And another really intriguing one. I cannot wait for this one. DSV Stadium in Victoria as the Seagulls host the Footscray Bulldogs. A fascinating one on this one. Who do you like in this one? What a ripper! What an absolute ripper of a game that is. Um, Williamstown went into the game against Footscray on this ground last year. They are very, very hard to beat at home, Williamstown. They're one of the hardest teams to beat at home anywhere. Uh, Footscray towed them up last year on that ground. So uh, that was a a game in about round 15 or 16, as, just as the Bulldogs were starting their, their charge towards the finals. They won 12 games in a row to come from nowhere, and Williamstown were one of the victims. Um I can't. I I just can't pick against Williamstown at Williamstown simply because of that home record. So I'm, I'm going to take them, but but this should be a thriller. I'm I'm with you in this one. I'll take the Seagulls at home, but that'll be that'll be a cracking one. I cannot wait to check that one out. And, and then another good one at the SCG in Sydney as the Swans host the Suns in this one. Oh, head versus heart tip on this one. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Sydney. They're coming off they're coming off a bye round. I think they're getting a little bit healthier with the potential with the potential of Luke Parker potentially back for the AFL side, which then kicks another talented player down to the VFL. So I'm gonna tip Sydney in this one as the curtain raiser before the AFL round. 
I'm, I'm reserving judgment <clears> until <throat> I see the team selections. <laughs> um, because, like, if it's the Suns team that played against Richmond in round one, you would think Sydney would win. Mm-hmm. If it's the Suns team that played against Box Hill Hawks last week in round three, then they are going to take a power of beating. And the, and the Suns actually have a crazy good record at VFL level against the Swans, e- even when they're uh, even when they're down near the bottom. And and looking back to the Neefel, the Suns seem to win games against the Swans when they've got no right to. Mm-hmm. And they're usually close. There's usually only a couple points in it. But the Suns, I've I've sat there and watched the Suns come from seven and eight goals down in the third quarter to beat the Swans. So, yeah, we'll we'll see how the selections come out. But if you base it solely on last week's games, which the Swans didn't play, then you've got to tip Gold Coast at the moment. Mm-hmm. Completely understand it. I, I a little bit of a homer tip there. I'm ho- I'm hoping. I'm hoping. So all right, Piranha well, Park in Coburg <laughs> as the Lions host the Collingwood Magpies. Can they end the streak? Can they end the losing streak? Or do the Pies continue the pain? If they play the way they did against Williamstown and and the way they did in the preseason, Coburg Coburg won three of their four games in the preseason as well. Um, they beat they beat Carlton twice and they beat Casey. So if they bring that form, then yes, they can definitely beat Collingwood. Uh, the Magpies a fantastic victory over over Carlton on Sunday. Um, so they will they will clearly start favourite. There's no question about that. But um, yeah, 24 losses in a row. Yeah, it, it's it's coming. They are getting closer. And they and they will turn someone over that no one expects them to to turn someone over this year. And and yes, it could be Collingwood. Um, I'll be tipping the Magpies at this stage for the same reason that I that I was tipping the Magpies against Darabin uh, in in the women's comp. But uh, yeah, Coburg with a big chance. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm going to tip the pies, but I'll be I'll be I'll be up here. I'll be up here barracking for Coburg. I want to see that. I want to see that streak end. Dude, same thing with with. You, you hate seeing teams have this long between drinks and, and the song. So and last but not least, ending the round at Icon Park as the Carlton Blues host the Port Melbourne Burrows. A fascinating one between these two sides here. Who do you like in this one? The aspiration stakes, isn't it, for both of them? Mm-hmm. Uh, Carlton 0 and 2, Port Melbourne 0 and 3. Um, you can You can potentially recover. From zero and three, if if Carlton do lose and drop to zero and three, you can potentially recover. But uh, for Port Melbourne, I think even with the friendly draw, and I tipped them to make the finals with a friendly fixture, one of those friendly games they've already they've already lost, um, and that's a loose friendly is a loose term because obviously Frankston played wonderful football that day. Um, I I think if Port can produce the footy that they did for three quarters against Casey, then then yeah, they they could very well win, and they and they probably would win, but I I'm not sure that they can put the four quarters together. So I'll be tipping Carlton at home at this stage. Yeah, I'm gonna go with you on that one. I think Carlton. I think Carlton on that one. But I and I'm hoping Port and giving a mighty crack. It'll be fun. So. Well, Brendan, that is it. We finally, uh, it seems like forever sometimes because of so many teams in the competition, we've got through the tipping. That is everything in the podcast. Again, sensational work by you. I know this isn't easy to do multiple rounds with sometimes up to 10 to 12 games per round. Holy shnikey, sometimes it, it blows my mind. So again, thank you as always for hopping on the podcast. It is always great being able to sit here and chat footy with you. And it's always a pleasure to talk to you too, Donnie. And as I always say, taking this great game to the world, um, we are we are so grateful for everything that you guys do. And uh, yeah, look forward to speaking again in the next couple of weeks. It'll be fantastic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for another episode of Donnie's Disposal. Again, keep uh, keep an eye out. More footy coverage still to come. Working on a few things as well for the podcast, so keep an eye on it. And that'll do it for another episode of Donnie's Disposal. Be back with more footy coverage very, very soon.